Okay, now we get to like mess with the model and break it. So I've got kind of three ideas that I think this model could manage. One is going super fancy, you know, like healthy cheesecake and tea, something that we can sell for more than a muffin. Two, selling in bulk. Maybe we could sell like hundreds of muffins at a time to our corporate customers. And finally, maybe we can just get rid of our biggest expense, the humans, and make like a muffin vending machine. Let's start with the fancy option. First, I'm just going to find and replace all instances of muffin with cheesecake. Now, let's just break the model down. We know that the maths is gonna work, so now we can just break the assumptions and see what happens on the other page. I'm gonna assume that our trading times are gonna be much of the same, but let's assume that we can sell a cheesecake for like, I don't know, $12 a slice. And again, I'm keeping that logic of like increasing prices year on year. I'll keep our tea price roughly the same. And the cool thing about this is we don't need a coffee machine anymore. Now, just by doing that, when we look at the EBITDA, we can see that we're somehow making $136,000 in the first year. If we compare that to the muffin shop where we made 10,000, 30,000 and 60,000, 130, 170 and 220 sounds amazing. But I'm guessing we have to raise some of our costs to account for the fact that we're making a more expensive product. So let's assume that the like the price of the ingredients is like triple what it was for muffins. And let's assume that it takes a bit more time to actually cook the things and that we're paying a slightly higher wage. Seems like our operating costs will be kind of much the same. We still have to market it and have rent and all that kind of stuff. But we can see that we're still making more money. So the interesting thing about what we've done is we've just taken the idea of a coffee and muffin cart and we've suddenly turned it into a cheese and tea cart. If our goal is to make money, then who cares what we're selling? We're making money. But this does throw up a whole bunch more questions. Can we actually make a nice cheesecake? Is that actually how much it costs to make a cheesecake? Could we just buy the cheesecake from a vendor instead of having to make it ourselves? All right, let's try again. But instead we'll do the selling in bulk idea. So we'll go back to muffins. We'll make a copy of the spreadsheet and mess with the numbers. So what I'm gonna do now is basically change our unit economics. We're gonna just get rid of all the line items that relate to coffee entirely and change muffin in the singular sense to like a pack of muffins. Maybe it's got like a dozen or, or 50 muffins in it. So just by deleting the coffee items, we can actually see that we lose $23,000 in the first year. That already tells us that selling coffee alongside our muffins is what makes the business viable in the first place. So to make up for that loss by not selling coffee, we have to sell heaps and heaps of muffins. So let's assume that we're selling a dozen muffins at a time. If we were selling them for $4.50 each, we'll just times that by 12. Now we've got to wonder how many packs of muffins could we sell per hour? Maybe this is just like, I'm sitting on the phone calling corporate offices every single day to be like, hey, would you like to buy a 12 pack of muffins every week for your team? Love like. I don't know, Muffin Mondays or something like that. At which point maybe I'm on the phone like six hours a day and maybe I can sell one every hour. We'll assume the ingredient cost is greater because we are making more muffins, but it'll go down because we're gonna buy ingredients in bulk. Now, as we develop it, we're suddenly learning, like, if we're just selling it via the phone, we don't actually need a cart. Which suddenly saves us $15,000 in capital costs. What if we could just get rid of the kitchen equipment as well? Suddenly it sounds like we're just like a middleman that sells someone else's muffins in bulk to corporate offices. And maybe we're doing like nice packaging or we're making the delivery really simple. So I'm just going to get rid of the idea of packing up or packing down and no one's gonna man a coffee cart. So all we have is someone driving around delivering muffins and then someone else just calling people and selling them muffins every day. The fun thing about this is we've just dumped in a bunch of numbers that we think are vaguely plausible and we get to go and see how the numbers actually turn out at the end.
We've created a confusingly profitable business. It seems like we make $350,000 in the first year. That sounds nuts. Uh, let's figure out what we broke. My gut feel is that the muffin ingredients that are killing us. Now we could call someone up and say, how much will 12 muffins cost please in bulk? And they'll tell us, but I'm just gonna guess it's probably gonna be like 20, 30% cheaper than whatever we sell it to other people. Looking back at the cash flow, we've got something that seems a little bit more realistic. We've got a pretty nice gross margin, but then because of all of the employee expenses again, except this time it's delivery and phone sales, we make a pretty similar EBITDA to the first model. So I guess the interesting thing there is, what kind of company do I wanna run? Do I wanna be on my feet every day, making coffees and selling muffins and talking to people? Or do I wanna be like squirreled away in a shared office, just making calls constantly? They're two very different kinds of businesses that make a similar amount of money to a very different kind of customer. Let's extend the model into the other direction and just get rid of the humans. Because in the two previous models, we learned that wage costs are a really big part of our business. In this kind of business, wages are always going to be one of the biggest costs. There's just something you can't really get around. But let's try. Because it's a robot, we're gonna be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Because it's a vending machine, I, I imagine now muffins are gonna be a bit like cheaper. They're not gonna be as nice because they might get a little bit stale. And now we have to try and guess like how many muffins could we sell per hour through a vending machine? I guess that depends on where it is and what the foot traffic is like. Let's guess that in peak time, you might have people lining up, at which point it'd sell one every minute or two, but then there's gonna be like throughout the night when there's no one there and it's gonna sell zero. So on average, maybe it's like, I don't know, 10 per hour. Gonna get rid of the tea and coffee line items and we're gonna get rid of the serving hours per day. And now we thought we were getting rid of the wage costs, but somebody's gonna have to stock the vending machine each day. But because it's a really simple task, we can probably pay like minimum wage, which in Australia is like $18.50. Now I'm kind of thinking of this model for one vending machine. So I can imagine it takes somebody like an hour to restock it each morning. They drive to the vending machine, they fill it up, they go away. And what we're saving in people costs, we're probably paying for in vending machine costs. Now I have no idea how much it costs to make a vending machine, but let's just assume it's much more than like a coffee cart. Like, $50,000 or something. And now the moment of truth. Again, a surprisingly profitable business. I'm guessing there's a whole bunch of stuff that I haven't thought of in this model. So let's go back and make it a bit more conservative. Even though we're paying minimum wage to restock it, let's assume that we're paying somebody to fix the vending machine when it breaks. Now there's one of these funny things, because we've got wages per hour times hours per day because we built this around the idea of paying barista staff. So to make this model work, I'm actually gonna add two different tiers of wages. We've got the restocking hours, which is simply somebody going and filling up the thing with muffins. And then we've got repair hours. And that's somebody who's more qualified to actually fix the machine. So whilst we've got wages per hour and hours per day for restocking, for our repair person, it's probably gonna be more like wages per hour and then hours per month, because they'll only spend five hours of every month actually fixing the thing. Then we have to update the maths in the cash flow table to reflect that. And we end up with what seems to be a pretty profitable business. Again, my gut says that whilst we're saving a lot of money in our wage cost, we're probably gonna be spending a lot more in product and the machinery. So let's revisit the first tab. I'm gonna assume that we're making very little margin on the actual product. We're buying it from a wholesaler for $2.50 and selling it for three. We're just hoping to sell a lot and not pay any wage cost. And let's assume that the vending machine is actually really, really expensive. Let's assume we've got to spend $150,000 designing it, testing it, and building it. You know, there might be an entire year of an engineer's wage just making the damn thing. And suddenly we get to a model where we make only $4,000 in the first year, despite an equity investment of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Then in the second year, we're making $40,000. And in the third, like 90. Now, this is what I'd expect to see from a product business. We're either like breaking even or losing money in the first year or couple of years. And then as things get more efficient and we sell more product, it gets efficient over time. 
The interesting thing about this vending machine model is it's basically like the profit calculation for one vending machine. So what happens if we put this muffin vending machine idea in like, I don't know, every airport in the world or every street corner in New York, San Francisco and Beijing? Okay, so I'm just gonna take our EBITDA for a single vending machine and multiply it by many vending machines. There's a bit of like magic that I'm doing in this with dollar signs, just Google locking cells in Google spreadsheets to understand what I've done. So to explain it simply, I basically just timed our first, second and third year EBITDAs by a number, one, two, three, four, five, etc. If we scroll down, we can see that at 44 vending machines, we're making 180K in the first year, 1.9 million in the second, and 3.9 million in the third. These are crazy numbers and they don't make any sense. So in a few minutes, we've planned out like three very different stories for our business, which means three very different like job descriptions. Do I wanna be like making coffee every day of the week? Do I wanna be on the phone selling muffins to corporates? Or do I wanna become a vending machine repairman? Like these are really different jobs and I get to ask myself like, what do I wanna do with my life based on these numbers? And lastly, it's three different experiments that I can go and work on tomorrow. I can see how much it costs to actually make cheesecake. I can see if corporates actually wanna buy muffins in bulk. And I can see just how complicated it is to build a vending machine. And the nice thing is that all of those expensive options have cost me 20 minutes in front of a spreadsheet.